Hello everybody, welcome to the studio. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. So Fujifilm just announced the new X106 or X100VI, whatever you want to call it. And it's got some pretty cool specs. In this video, we're going to talk about the new specs on the X106. And then we're going to talk about what makes the X100 series of cameras so amazing. Like it, they are absolutely amazing. And trust me, this is coming from a lifelong Canon guy. I'm a Canon fanboy. I have pretty much all the Canon gear. I love Canon. But when I tried the X100V back in 2020, it just changed something. It, 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 this camera, like the technical specs aren't the best. It's not amazing in any kind of cr like crazy way. It doesn't have the best of anything, but it's the feeling, it's the mood, it's the vibe, it's the experience. And like, I'm telling you, this camera made me fall in love with photography all over again. I absolutely love it. And if you're thinking about buying a Fuji X100V or X106, whatever the case may be, I strongly recommend it. But before I get into that part of the video, first, let's talk about the new specs in the X106 and then we'll go on from there. All right. All right, so let's talk about the specs in the 106 that really stand out to me. This is the uh, X100V right here. I don't have a six in hand. Unfortunately, my YouTube channel is not big enough to warrant an invitation by Fuji to go to one of their, their crazy events, but hopefully in the future, I'll get to uh, play around with some cameras. If you guys subscribe though, I mean, we, we gotta grow this channel. We gotta make it bigger so that we can you know, do more things. But um, one thing I will say right off the bat is, Fuji had a winning recipe with the X100V. This is an incredible camera. It worked really well. I mean, size-wise, button layout, everything, you know, it's just fun to use. And I'm so happy to say that in the new camera, the 106, they didn't mess around. They added a couple more bells and whistles, so it's a nicer camera, has better features, but they didn't change the overall camera. So thank you, Fuji, for that. Thank you for like staying the course with your camera design. So awesome, kudos to you for that. All right, so first thing, let's talk about price. The new Fuji X106 is gonna be like two, $300 more expensive than the previous model, and that's US dollars. So in other countries around the world, you're gonna see you know different shifts depending on the value of your currency. And you know what? Like, I'm not upset by it. The, the popularity of the X100V went through the roof, so Fuji could have asked for an $800 price increase on the X106, and a lot of people would have still bought it, and the hype would have still been real, and you know they still would have sold. So thank you to Fuji for not overcharging us for the X106, even though they could have and still would have made money. The new X106 is gonna be a little bit wider and, and heavier than the X100V. I think somewhere between the uh, one to two millimeter range in width, it's just gonna be a little wider, a little heavier. And the reason for that is they added IBIS to the camera. So the new one is gonna have IBIS in it. Now, traditionally IBIS isn't really a big deal. It's not something to get too excited about for photographers. It's more of a videography thing if you want nice steady video. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I think adding two millimeters of size and a little bit of weight is well worth it to get IBIS for most of us. I think that's pretty awesome. And for the longest time, companies, <coughs> Canon, say that you can't have IBIS and an internal ND filter in a camera. Well, guess what? Fujifilm just did it in a pocketable camera. They have an ND filter and IBIS in here, which is absolutely awesome. All right, so now the X106 series of cameras has IBIS with six stops of stabilization. Is it something to get excited about? Not really. I mean, video shooters aren't really gonna buy an X106 for video because it's not gonna be a great video camera. Most photographers just shoot daylight stuff, so it's not really gonna make a big difference to them. So who's gonna get excited about the IBIS? People who shoot in low light. Now, APS-C sensors are notoriously bad in low light. They're noisy, they're smaller, they don't gather as much light. So if you can leave that shutter open longer to get more light into it, you can get better shots in low light situations. So if you shoot at dusk, if you shoot at night, if you shoot concerts, if you shoot, I don't know, night shots, night landscapes, whatever the case may be, if you're into that kind of photography, if you like to go out at night and shoot pictures, the new X106 is your camera, especially if you're looking for something pocketable and small that you can just carry around with you incognito. So that's awesome. And imagine like, the black series camera, the all black one, and you're shooting at night, like people won't even see the camera. It's gonna be like the perfect night shooting stealth camera. All right, another exciting piece of news for people who wanna buy the Fuji X106 is the fact that it's gonna have Fuji's latest and greatest 40 megapixel APS-C size sensor, the same one found in the X-H2 series of cameras, which is absolutely fantastic, especially considering that the XS20 had the old 26 megapixels X-Trans 4 sensor in it. So I was kind of thinking that the new X100 camera might have the older sensor in it, and I'm certainly glad that it has the newer sensor, but it does bring up some questions. 
All right, so let me be honest with you. Here's my big concern with the X106, and we won't know the truth about this until it starts shipping and regular YouTubers start reviewing the cameras because when you have these sponsored videos or these reviewers who are getting free product from, from Fuji, obviously they're gonna be giving, you know, positive reviews. So my concern is this, 40 megapixel APS-C is a high resolution sensor. And in order to take advantage of a high resolution sensor and get really clean, crisp shots, you need a lens that has a high resolving power. Now, if we think back to when the X-H2 cameras were released, there was this big controversy because only certain lenses in Fuji's lineup had the resolving power to take advantage of the sensor, and a lot of them didn't, right? So depending on what lenses you had, anyway, I mean, it was a bit, a bit strange that Fuji did that. So the question is, this lens here on the X100V, does it have the resolving power to take advantage of a high resolution 40 megapixel sensor? This X100V lens is brand new, was just created for the X100V, so it's only a couple years old, but this is a 26, 26 megapixel sensor. The new camera is gonna be 40 megapixels, so that's a big jump. So will this lens be able to take advantage of the sensor or will the sensor take advantage of the lens's flaws? I don't know. So here's a clip from Gordon Lang's video where he compares the X100V to the X106, and it looks like the six is sharper and cleaner. I'm gonna link his video down below. And here's a clip from Granger's video where he talks about how the X106 image is soft for an APS-C censored camera. But we really won't know how good the X106 is compared to the V until it gets into the hands of real reviewers. And with that being said, I have put in my pre-order for the camera. It's gonna arrive when it arrives. And when it does, I will be testing it against the X100V so I can show you guys all the difference between the two cameras. And we can really discuss if the upgrade is worth it. So yeah, if you're into that, definitely subscribe to the channel because we will be comparing both those cameras and doing photo shoots and all sorts of fun stuff. So I welcome you to the channel to watch that content. So we will find out soon enough if the lens takes advantage of the resolution of the sensor or if the sensor takes advantage of the flaws of the lens. One of the biggest flaws with the Fujifilm X100V was the fact that the autofocus was trash. I'm just gonna be honest. I know there's a lot of hype over this camera and stuff like that, but I'm gonna be honest. On a scale of one to 10, I'd give it a four out of 10 on autofocus. Fuji's just known for really bad autofocus when it comes to video and photo. 100% of the time, I have this camera on single shot autofocus. So if I'm you know, shooting a family event or picnic, barbecue, birthday, whatever the case may be, even on the street, I'm single shot focusing on something that isn't moving and then taking my shot or you know, focus, recompose, shoot, whatever the case may be, that's how I shoot with this camera. And you know what, truth be told, it's kind of nostalgic in a way because that's how I used to shoot back when the DSLR days, focus, recompose, shoot. So it is nostalgic for me and it's part of the charm of the camera. But if you're looking for like a very sophisticated, awesome autofocus system like you find in Canon or Sony, you're not gonna find it here. Fuji is putting the latest and greatest autofocus algorithm from its flagship cameras into the X106. But I wouldn't hold your breath because of all the big camera brands, Fuji is clearly at the bottom of the pile when it comes to autofocus technology. So will the upgrade in the X106 be significant? I think it'll be better than the V, but will it be on par with Sony or Canon or some of the big boy names? I don't think so. So, you know, don't get too excited, but you know, it is gonna be a little bit better. All right, so let's touch on video and I'll be honest with you, I don't think anybody is going to be buying the Fuji X106 for video creation because it's just, it's such a crippled camera for video. I think it's more of like a novelty feature that Fuji just put in there. It's not really gonna be used for video. You don't have a flip out screen so you can't vlog yourself. The other issue is like, yes, you can shoot 6K 30P, but it's using a UHS-1 card slot, which is old tech, which is really slow, read write speed, super slow, which means that the bit rate for that 6K footage is going to be really low, which means your 6K footage is probably gonna look closer to 1080p footage. But on a positive note, I will say this, if you primarily shoot with Fuji cameras and you have a main Fuji camera that you do your video work with and you're looking for a secondary camera, like let's say you're a documentary filmmaker and you have your Fuji camera because it's nice and compact, it's not too big, it's great for that kind of thing, and you're in a situation where you don't wanna bring out your big camera or they don't let you bring a big camera because they'll kick you out if they see it, you can bring this little guy here, right? pull out the screen here and you can kind of shoot from the hip and get some video footage. And because this sensor has the same color science as your other Fuji sensors, same film simulations and all that stuff, F-Log, you'll be able to blend footage out of, your, out of your X106 into your main footage easily. So even though I don't think people will be buying this as a primary video camera, it might be helpful to those of you who do shoot video with Fuji cameras.
All right, hopefully you enjoyed that perspective on the new X106. I didn't want to make a video all about hype, 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 buy the camera, buy the camera, buy the camera. I wanted to give you like a real user experience perspective on the camera based on somebody who's used the X100V and my real genuine thoughts on the camera system. So hopefully that was valuable to you. And if it was, leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it working hard to grow this channel. So with that being said, let's talk about what makes the X100V series so special. All right, so I'm editing the video right now and um, my next bit where I talk about why I love the X100 series of cameras is about 10 minutes long. Video already hit 10 minutes. Don't wanna make a 20 minute video because nobody wants to watch 20 minute videos. So I'm gonna separate it in two different videos. So with that being said, this video is going to be cut right here. But if you wanna know more about the X100V or X106 when it arrives, definitely subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you wanna see more of or what you want me to test and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, let me know because this is an interactive channel. I love my audience. So let's communicate. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.